Chris, really interested to talk to you today about assurance, because actually some of the highest value I reckon from analytics and from new sorts of intelligence will come from assurance going forwards. Uh, wondering, Chris, could you talk to us about what you've seen around your client expectations for the adoption of AI ops in particular? This continued push on improved customer experience through assurance, uh, automation, analytics, AI, uh, is really expressed through initiatives like uh, reducing support contacts. That's the that's the heart and minds sort of things. I don't want my customer to have to call and tell me something's broken. But we also see it in things like rationalizing uh, the amount of time being spent in various tools, that mythical single pane of glass, or at least breaking down those operational silos. There's an inherent cost savings there, but really there's an efficiency. And, and then, of course, reducing outage and outage times is a lot of how that's measured. For the AI ops, the expectation is that the product will touch all of these points uh, and more, detecting issues uh, more quickly. Uh, which leads to less outages, uh, correlating faults and anomalies across operational silos, which leads to less swivel chair across those tools that I mentioned, and faster outage remediation. And all of this, of course, leads to better customer experience. Especially with customer experience, until you actually do it, how much value you're going to get. So can I ask you to just talk through some of your examples? Absolutely. Uh, we have a customer now that's that's rapidly turning up a, a new network. And there's a lot of noise coming from the various network elements. And what we're helping to do with VIA and AI Ops is cutting through that noise. We're seeing over 99.9% .9 noise reduction. Okay, so what does that mean? That means we can get to the root of the problem more quickly. So um, if we take that noise reduction and we apply it to something that maybe we can turn into dollars and cents or NPS scores, for one of uh, our large OTT providers, we've been able to help them reduce streaming service failure rates by uh, 28%, which is millions, actually almost tens of millions of uh, different failures from getting the content that you want from logging in and so on. And that's really identifying the root of the problem versus just the symptoms of that. If we take it over to a fixed line provider and we turn it back to that customer care side, we're looking at reducing interactions into the call center uh, by over 700 a day. And when you look at technician visits in the hundreds as well, what does that equate to? It's well over a couple million dollars per year uh, in, in savings that we're seeing just from those reduced phone calls alone. That's also a little bit harder to measure, but that's going to increase your NPS too. And when you talk about that in terms of of people, we need to do more with the same uh, because these the complexities of these networks and delivering services is getting harder. So when you're looking at those savings, that means you can continue to keep that staff there. And could you just talk to us about what's changing in operations and how these results were delivered? I mean, the key here is that legacy tools uh, they just simply can't operate in environments like this, where new networks are being rolled out, new services are being delivered. So those those days of operations, as you mentioned, the the knocks and the socks, and just staring at the screen, it's it's quickly eroding um, because those tools that they have and those processes they won't adapt to the changing environments. So they're rules based, they're rigid, and you know really. Uh, looking at a red dot or waiting for a, a line to turn red on, on your screen uh, to go triage an alarm, uh, it just doesn't scale. And it requires users to click through and try to find the answer. But in a lot of cases, uh, AI ops can find that answer for you. We're augmenting that process. We're augmenting the intelligence. We're augmenting the operational process. And then that means that the operations teams, though, they need to trust what we're coming to. They need to trust the conclusions and the stories that our product is telling. The way we do that is through the results like the ones that I mentioned. Uh, that's a quick way to, uh, to build trust. The idea of augmenting the experience for those in the NOC or in the SOC or in the customer services domain, it just means that you can have staff that perhaps 
don't know so much because as we move from a sort of proper networking to more the networks that look a bit more like IT systems, you've got stuff going on. And so if you can have a system that um, just bubbles up the answer to issues or issues that they that people didn't realise were issues, it's just going to be so useful so you can have staff that haven't got, you know, 50 years experience sitting sitting in chairs, you know, they can they can have that like a bit less experience or, or even no experience and still be able to tell what's going on. We've got a lot of a lot of talk in the tech industry about the recession um, and kind of the drag that we're seeing in the sector. I haven't heard too much talk from operators about reducing headcount at the moment. They're sort of reasonably lean, but it, no doubt operators will be wanting to, to talk about reducing investment. What are you seeing in terms of, of what operators are telling you? We're hearing a few things and we, you know, the recessionary drag is, is an interesting part because I think we're seeing some uh, macro changes, right? We went through the, the great resignation, which obviously is a big hindrance to operation staff as, as well, because there's high, high turnover, sometimes higher than other parts of the industry. To your point of needing to be able to sit down and do their jobs, you almost require augmentation of some sort. And, and so AIOps is helping drive that we certainly want to do more with the same people that we have. And doing more um, is resolving some of those issues faster. Doing more is uh, being able to be turning up a network uh, while you're assuring your legacy network. All of those things, if we can do those with the same staff, then we're winning and the customers are, are happy in the end. If we think about some, you know, some specifics here, uh, the way that traditional operations works, you're almost triaging issues one at a time, and you're almost triaging faults sometimes one at a time, definitely triaging uh, various different operational layers one at a time. So in the old way of filtering through your list of high priorities, looking for that one fault or that one anomaly that explains why something is happening, just simply doesn't scale and won't scale. And so where AI ops is helping is instead of a situation where someone looks and says, why did I uh, have this red alert? That red alert is related to a link failing. Let me click down through and identify the device that's impacted or the connected devices that are impacted. Where instead with something like AI ops and via providing, providing that augmented uh, operational story what we're seeing is power fluctuation across the optical card. That's causing a link flapping issue, which is then disconnecting your radio units that are attached to it. At the same time, you may be causing a network um, reconvergence from an ISIS adjacency or a BGP adjacency side. Well, there's five, six, 10, 12, 15 things that are going to manifest itself through hundreds, if not thousands of different faults. We're bringing that all together, not on a thousand lines in a screen, but in a single line that's really automated and opening up a ticket that says, here's the root cause, here's what we need to go and, and troubleshoot, and it will remediate for you all of these downstream faults. So instead of triaging 20, 30, 40 issues, we're triaging one, and a lot of times we're automating the triage of that closing incidents out before someone even uh, has time to pick them off off a traditional work queue useful everyday stuff that needs to happen you know as we get as we get more 5g traffic hopefully new 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 services so uh, very interesting thank you very much for for chatting with me today it's appreciated thanks charlotte as always